Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader, where we are going to do some up potting or some repotting from my aero garden or hydroponic system into the dirt in preparation to harden off our plants, to get them larger and be ready after the frost free date. So I'm gonna share a few things with you. I hope you'll stay tuned. So this year I'm gonna try something a little different and I can't claim that it was my original idea. So my son actually suggested this to me. I am a big fan of the Fox Farm soils, if you can see them over here. So I have Happy Frog and Ocean Forest. So Happy Frog is a good one to start things with, but not as good um, for ongoing growing, shall we say, as the Ocean Forest because it's a little richer. But if you start things out in the ocean forest, you can actually burn your plants a little bit. Now, just to show you, here is one, yes, those are roots of my beefsteak tomatoes. I actually have three really healthy plants. And if you look, there's actually two stems. Um, yeah, so probably got more than one seed in there, right? But I have a whole bunch of things spread out here. So let me tip you down. So there's a million ways you could do this. You can use peat pots like this. You can use the coconut core pots. You can use plastic grow cells. But if you take a look here, this is gonna grow out the cell pretty quickly. So unless it's a tiny, tiny plant, what I had originally planned to do was to put the ocean forest in, fill this up with the happy frog, and then set it inside so it could root through. And then as it got bigger, started to outgrow the cell, I could then pull this out, it would be molded, and I could simply put these in. Because of the size of these particular plants, I decided, well, maybe I could go to plan B. So I save, and I probably should have taken the handles off of these. I save anything I purchase. I try to save the containers. If they're, oof, I'll do that off camera so y'all don't have to listen to it. But this seems like a much better option for my larger tomato plants. Now, I don't have a lot of these pea pots. Generally where I will buy them, yeah, and they're hard to get apart, is honestly at Dollar General end of season. Um, I got a whole bunch at the Amish thrift store for like 50 cents or something. So I'm gonna start with the peat pots like this. I, let me take this handle off. We're gonna fill this up partially with the ocean forest. Then into the peat pots, we will put the happy frog around these. So stay tuned. All right, Elsa, so what you wanna do is keep your soil dry, leave it fluffy so that you can kind of make a hole and an indent for your secondary planting device, whether you're using peat pot or coconut core or whatsoever. And then we'll make a hole. We'll give our roots some room to expand and top off with dirt. So let me get a few done and I'll bring you back to show you what that looks like. All right, y'all. Looking these over, they might have been big enough just to go in the ocean forest because they are quite large. So I'm gonna do a little experiment. I'm gonna pull three more plants. I'm going to put them in ocean forest and we'll just see which one does better. I have plenty of um, soil for either one. Now, I've tried to keep track of what is what with my crazy labeling system. So what I'm going to do is write it on a note card and stick here because I have a tendency to forget what is what. Now these are looking a little wilty. They don't like being pulled out of their happy little um, watery hole, but they will perk up once I water them. So I have kind of a funny story I wanna share with you all. So let me grab a few more plants and we'll plant and chit chat. So if any of you are wondering whether hydroponic systems work, 
there is about a foot long root on each one of these um, big boy tomatoes. So yes, it does work. And guys, I got gloves out, but I'm not very good about using gloves. So the nails are going to have to go here shortly. So let me share with you. <laughs> You're probably like, Kim, you're hopeless. I feel hopeless sometimes because I make so many crazy mistakes. So it's getting to be early landscape seasoning. I had a, a little bit of spring cleanup work done. New landscape guy, which I sense fired. Um, and that's a whole nother story that I won't go into. However, I don't have, I have dead bolts on all my doors and y'all know I got some new doors. They're steel doors, they're very secure. I have a security system. So this morning I go outside to fix my gate mm. and the side garage door, it's very windy today, slammed behind me. And even though I had told the landscape guy cause he was using, you know, like shovels and rakes and such out of the garage, I'm fine with that. Do not lock the bottom knob. Guess what he did? He locked the bottom knob. So here I stand in all my glory in sweatpants and house slippers. It is 30 degrees. And this was like an hour ago. <laughs> and my next door neighbors have keys. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> they weren't up yet. Um, let's see. So, oops, wrong cup. So I thought, no worries. I know they have a like a ring doorbell. Battery was dead on the ring doorbell. Don't have my phone, which was my bad. Don't have keys hidden anywhere. Don't want to break the glass in my brand new full glass back door, <laughs> which would be my only way of getting in. No way to call the cops to see if they could like jimmy the door or something. So yeah. Um, I took a chance and I tried the doorknob and lo and behold, they had had company last night and they didn't lock their door. <laughs> so good for me, right? <sighs> so here I go into their house, praying all the way. Um, please, Jesus, don't let them shoot me. <laughs> and I'm the whole time I'm like calling their names and saying, it's Kim next door, it's Kim next door. I'm so sorry, I locked myself out, it's Kim next door. So finally, I roused their son, Miles, who's 11, who wakes up his mom dead, you know, and, and they, they gave me the keys and I was able to get back in. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to make a little special surprise for them, I feel terrible about getting them up on a Saturday at like seven in the morning. So, all right guys, here is our first part of our tray planted. I think these tomatoes are plenty hardy enough. I'm not worried about using the ocean forest. I have to look every time because I called it ocean floor forever and I don't want to call it the wrong thing. So let me get the dirt off, grab some more plants, and then I'm gonna share with you my garden plans for these upcoming next weeks. Ta-da! All right, y'all, <laughs> that was a lot of work. So please excuse, we are in my dining room, it's a tight fit, but this year I decided to, instead of using the plant holders, which these long trays don't fit well on, I just set up a folding table. Let me back you up just a touch, okay. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about ongoing care and keeping my beautiful seedlings alive. They really look lovely. Did all of my seedlings sprout? No, they did not. Um, but a gracious plenty did. So one of the things I do recommend before we start talking about my setup is if you have a hydroponic system, if you take really good care of it, so as soon as you're done with your seedlings, get it cleaned. If you're wondering how I got the black Sharpie, 
I sprayed it with rubbing alcohol and used a magic eraser. Came right off. Clean your filters. Um, if you plan to do more seedlings, you can leave your seed starter tray in or you can switch over to the full growing tray either way. So ongoing care. I have it and you can't really see this y'all and I don't know how to show you any better. I'll just tell you. You can see here I have two clip to the table grow lights that I got off Amazon. I will link them below. I've had them for I don't even know how many years. Um, four I think. I think. And then they're sitting on heat mats. Now this back here, I'm gonna buy one more heat mat. They're not terribly expensive. Um, and I double, <laughs> double use my heat mat to help when I'm um, fermenting, I guess you would say, a sourdough. It is a big help for that as well. I will leave the lights on um, a lot of hours a day because the grow lights are not the same as sunlight. So at first, because they're in a little bit of shock, but they're starting to perk up, I'll probably leave the lights on 24 seven. If they start to show signs of heat stress or light stress, then I'll start turning them off at night. As our weather warms, if it ever warms. <laughs> Y'all, we've had the craziest Ohio weather. We had a 72 last week, one day and um, like three days later, it was 20 degrees with the feels like a 14. So it's far too soon, of course, to start hardening these off. Um, if some of the ones look like they're a little bit crowded, I can up pot them. So I had purchased two 12 quart bags of the, um, oh, I can never, Happy Frog and Ocean Forest. 12 quarts eats. I only used about half. So I spent about $18 in soil, but I want to, I want to do a little math with you this morning. So six times three is 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, and six is 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. So I have 46 seedlings. Now, if you've all been out in the um, lawn and garden <laughs> section, even of Walmart. Um, and that's not a, I'm not talking about like a Lowe's or a um, gardens, a true garden center. They're about five bucks each. So well over $200 worth of plants. And did I use electricity? I absolutely did. Will I continue? It's such a low amount, y'all. It's, it's almost nothing. Um, so I have about $18 in soil. A lot of the seeds were saved seeds, either from my son, you know, if you remember back to my planting video, but some were purchased seeds. What I will say is my toothache plant and my cone flower didn't do anything. Um, I do have a crap ton of tomatoes. <laughs> Sorry, that's not very nice. Hot pepper, sweet peppers, hollyhocks, snapdragons, cucumber, um, did I say sweet peppers? A couple kinds of hot peppers. So this is going to be a great start. Now I've purchased other seeds because I direct so like squash and um, corn and beans and things like that. So there are a lot of things in Ohio, even being in zone 6A, that I can go ahead and plant directly. So this will be my, my little garden center slash dining room for the next, well, today is the 23rd of March. It's Saturday when I'm actually filming. Yeah, and I wanna stop right here and thank you all for your kind, sweet comments, your thoughts, your prayers. Um, I turned the corner really on yesterday, but I am still kind of taking it easy in spite of being out in my <laughs> slippers in the freezing cold with no coat and breaking into the neighbor's house this morning. <laughs> Y'all, I couldn't make this stuff up. And Grace, actually, um, they have like a keypad. And um, so I have the keypad code now if I ever need to come in and I know where she keeps the key. And all I could say to her is thank you for not shooting me. <laughs> so 
it, you know, I never just walked into somebody's house like that. And, and while they've been great neighbors and great friends, I wouldn't normally do that. Okay, so I am going to leave my seed starting tray in the arrow garden, but I'm gonna shut it down and I'm gonna clean it out. I still have plenty more plugs if I decide, oh, I really want to try to start something else because we still have plenty of time. And I start to say today is March 23rd. Um, I won't be planting for another probably close to six weeks. So six weeks of babysitting. I don't mind doing it. I love to see things grow. I love seeing the earth come back to life. My girls are laying great. They're just having a blast outside eating worms and the grass is starting to green up, which means landscaping mowing costs are coming up, but that's okay. That's just part of the circle of life and the cycle of the seasons and I love living in Ohio. So my plan, y'all, I'm um, really trying hard not to overdo it. And I, I don't know if y'all can even tell, I don't think I showed you, if you can see the redness here. So that's kind of the lingering um, effects. But, but I was so swollen that I lost two and a half pounds of water in a day once I kind of turned the corner. Phew, that was, that was a busy day in the restroom. <laughs> so, um, and my face has gone down a little bit too. Um, I'm still on steroids, but I just can't thank y'all enough shoot, now I'm going to cry about it. You know, I, I know that my channel is small. I know that I will never, you know, have 100,000 subscribers, but that's never been really in my goal. I just love having a connection with like-minded people and learning from you all, and I hope you learn something from me as well. So, I will see you on Thursday. I think I'm gonna go ahead and plant in my veggie pod. I think I'm gonna do some lettuce and some radishes. So we are still having such, such hard freezes. I'm even reluctant to plant early crops. I may give it into the second week of April. So more gardening adventures to come. Tomorrow is, which by the time you all see this, it will have passed. Tomorrow is my 63rd birthday, so I've completed 63 trips around the sun, and I have some fun plans with girlfriend, and I will share with you, I got some really cool gifts from my son, bless his sweetheart. Um, I will be sharing those with you, not to be like, oh, look what I got, but they're home study type things, and I'm like, you know you're a homesteader when you get excited about these type of gifts. Also, someone, one of y'all, sent me a gift, and it was a, it's a cookbook, and it didn't have any note in it. So if you're watching, I thank you, and I will talk more about that on Thursday. So until then, grow your seedlings, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and take care.